This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a unique online presence and grow your brand. Well, friends, it's that time of year again, August. So the other night, I went to sit outside to enjoy the fall weather, read a good book, and ponder what abstract concepts I'm going to be turning into characters next. And as I was sitting there, reading my book, and admiring how creepy the moon looked, I was rudely dive-bombed by an unknown insect. And as I was lying there on the cold wood floor, life flashing before my eyes, I finally located the culprit. Of course. It was so obvious. I had finally found my muse, my inspiration, moths. I mean, just look at these little guys. They have interesting coloration, lots of variety, and a lot of them already look like they're wearing cute little cozy autumn sweaters. It's perfect, Jerry. But what am I gonna be turning the moths into, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did. Lady. So I wanted to choose moths that were fun and colorful and that would look nice together So I chose the rosy maple moth the luna moth and the scarlet bodied wasp moth So to get into my inspo boards a little bit all of the moths that I chose have such a beautiful coloration in shapes It wasn't very difficult to come up with ideas for them So for each of them I pinned a lot of fantasy inspired clothing that just remind me of the shapes and the colors of each moth And as a secondary source of inspiration I also pinned images of the trees that they like to nest in maybe to get inspiration for their staffs or something like that. And finally, because moth <laughs> jokes, I wanted light to be part of their power system. So I pinned a lot of images of like lanterns and witches using light magic to help inspire that as well. And once again, because I have learned my lesson from basically having to completely redo the villain gem designs. So I began by thumbnailing the characters out in Procreate just to figure out what the heck I'm doing. So at first, whenever I was jumping into Procreate here, I only really had a solid idea idea for the rosy maple moth and I didn't have a firm direction for the other two. I really wanted to design a guy character in this group since a lot of you have been requesting that and honestly I need to work on drawing male faces and bodies. So at first I was going to make the luna moth a masculine character to kind of go in a, a different direction than what you'd expect because a luna moth honestly just looks like a very pretty elegant lady but I ended up finding some luxurious green dresses that I absolutely loved uh, so I gave into my impulse pulses to go with a feminine design for her instead. So I decided to go with a masculine design for the Scarlet Moth and I feel like it worked pretty well because that moth already kind of reminds me of a punk slash emo slash metal dude. So these designs ended up going in a pretty interesting direction to say the least and as far as coordinating their shapes and colors as a group, um, I don't think I did the best job of choosing moths that looked good together because the Scarlet Moth looks pretty out of place next to the pastels but I decided to roll with it anyways. And if you're taking notes at home trying to figure out where these moths fit into my weird fantasy pantheon of characters, I have no idea. Which is why I am currently working on adding character alignment profiles to my portfolio website, which is hosted by this video's sponsor, Squarespace. They offer dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates that made it super easy for me to create my portfolio website in just about an hour. I can customize everything from text to colors to website pages and features like automatic image scaling meant I could just quickly drop in all my portfolio pieces and BAM! It already looked great! Their wide range of website building tools can combine to suit whatever you need your website to do. Like some of my recent shenanigans. Lately I've been using some video blocks to embed some of my sketchbook tours onto my portfolio page so that clients can see some of my more iterative work. And since Squarespace can link to my various social media accounts, I've been using a social block to show off some of my more recent sketches from my Instagram. But they also offer a ton of customization for a more hands-on approach, which is where those trusty character profiles come in. Building them out has been really simple. I just added a new page and created buttons for each character section that link to galleries where I can add reference images and information about each one of my characters. Speaking of pages, I also have a page that links to my Squarespace store because Squarespace also has an excellent e-commerce commerce platform, which can also source products from my print-on-demand service so that I don't have to be hands-on while fulfilling orders. So if you want to build a delightfully overcomplicated portfolio site, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash prickleyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for returning to sponsor the channel. Now, let's personify some moths.
So, like I said, for these characters, I of course wanted their designs to be informed by the shapes and the colors of the moths, the trees they nest in, and the light-based power system. But I also wanted some characterization for a change because I'm not always great at thinking about that part. So when I saw the rosy maple moth, I thought it was just so cute. And it immediately reminded me of a little preteen girl who loves pink and purple and cute girly things. Oh my gosh. So I wanted this character to be a young witch in training, a Padawan witch, if you will. And I just generally wanted to make her very wholesome and cute. So because she's the new witch and maybe a bit of a fish out of water, I wanted her silhouette to look a little bit like she's drowning in clothes that are a little bit too big for her. So I decided to go with a weird poncho slash cloak combo for her main clothing piece since ponchos are a very functional piece of warm clothing and generally look very mothy. So I styled hers to have sleeves and a cloak piece in the shape of the rosy moth's wings, and since I'm also pulling inspiration from the tree that a lot of rosy maple moths like to nest in, the maple tree, I also added some cute maple leaf knit patterns and a poofy color to the poncho since rosy maple moths pretty much already look like they're wearing a cozy autumn sweater. And to further sell that illusion that she's got oversized clothes on, or maybe secondhand clothes that don't quite fit right, I also gave her oversized gloves, boots, and a hat that probably slips down on her forehead a lot like the way Milo Thatcher helmet does in Atlantis, and I rounded out the ensemble with some fuzzy thigh-high leg warmers, a very cozy looking bright pink onesie, and of course, because I still wanted the design to look very witchy, a collection of belts, pouches, and potions. And for good measure, since this character is very sweet and moths pollinate plants, I figured she might be the kind of kid that's really obsessed with sugar, so I gave her a maple syrup bottle on her side as well to reference the maple trees again, and just because you never know when you're gonna come across a stack of pancakes, you know? Uh, or just get thirsty. So to pull from the maple tree motif again, I designed her staff slash broomstick to look like a maple tree branch and added a little maple leaf inspired lantern to the top that's kind of inspired by these designs. And that's where I'm thinking they store their magic or maybe they even have to recharge it in order to use their magic. But since they're nocturnal and live in a forest, I imagine it's kind of difficult to find light sources to charge their lanterns from. So maybe they have to hunt down lightning bugs or bioluminescent mushrooms or pixies to recharge their magic magic from there. But in terms of color scheme, I had a bit of a difficult time since the pink and yellow are so bright on the original moth, and I also wanted to add in the deeper red from the leaves of a Japanese maple tree and some more fallish colors, and in the end it was really difficult to balance everything since I feel like one set of colors is pastel and the other is autumnal, uh, but I really tried my best to make it work. But I think it works well enough given the biological reason rosy maple moths are brightly colored to throw off and confuse predators. So even though I feel like it turned out a little busy in terms of design and my color choices, I do think they suit the personality I'd imagine this character has. Very bright-eyed, enthusiastic and positive, but also a little shaky and uncertain, still lacking confidence in her skills as a witch, but definitely coming of age with the help of her mentors. Which brings us to the next two characters her positively disastrous mentors. First, before I move on to the next design, allow me to tell you all the names that I chose for the gemstone designs that I did. For the Gem Knights, I went with Percy for Peter Zite, which was suggested by N. Bay, Ramona for Red Barrel, which was suggested by Salami Chibata, and Prisma for Iris Agate, which was suggested by Human Potato. And for the villain gems, I went with Adara for Fire Opal, which was suggested by Rex is Just a Person, Mariana for Pearl, which was suggested by Zero Armored Soul Zero, and Nyx for Obsidian, which was suggested by Cairo Tai. I'm probably not saying that right. I am so sorry. I always really enjoy reading all your ideas and the reasoning behind them, so thank you so much to everyone who suggested names. Now, let's get back to it. Next up is the Luna Moth, which is a pretty popular type of moth. I see it all the time in like very graceful celestial artwork, and admittedly, I didn't go in a very different direction, but I did want to put my own spin on her. So if Rosie is the quote Padawan, then Luna and Scarlet are the masters, but I would imagine them having somewhat of a good cop, bad cop dynamic, or rather one where Luna is a little bit more strict and efficient at mentoring and Scarlet likes to teach Rosie mischievous spells and helps her to pull off pranks on other students. So Luna is definitely the authority figure in this group, even though Scarlet technically has the same teaching power. So I wanted her silhouette and overall presence to make an impression and be pretty striking. So I spent a while looking through different elegant green dresses and tried to come up with a style that was fantastical 
and beautiful, but also echoed the shape of the moth. So I went with this multi-tiered design with poofy sleeves and a plunging neckline to allude to this poofy orange bit on the head of the moth and tried to model some of the patterns on the dress after both the markings on the luna moth and one of their nesting trees of choice, a white birch tree. I also gave her long purple gloves to match the color of the moth's legs. Once again, plenty of pouches and potions for practical witching and a spooky pointy hat with birch tree antlers, eyes, and some pointy teeth on it. Because the other idea I wanted to pull on for these designs was the various predator defense mechanisms these moths have and luna moths have these interesting markings on their wings that look like eyes in order to confuse predators. So I took that a step further and designed the dress to look a little bit like it's alive with a couple sets of eyes and lots of sharp teeth. And I don't know, maybe that pink section in the front is like a mouth and opens up. That'd be kind of fun. I just really like the idea that this character would be able to do magic and make her dress come alive or even turn into a monster to scare or confuse opponents. So that's the other reason why her hat has a little spooky goblin face on it. Maybe she can enjoy chant it and it comes alive and grows little legs and attacks enemies only to return to her head like a good boy and get dog treat. I'm just spitballing here, but I think that idea is really, really cute. But my line of thinking was the same for her staff. I once again modeled it after a birch tree and imagined that the little dark spots were actually eyes that could come alive and open and just be generally disturbing. And listen, I know I used excessive eyes in my last character design video, but um, we don't have to bring that up. We, we can choose not to. But on her staff, I also gave her a little Luna Moth inspired lantern to capture her magic, which is also kind of inspired by these designs. And to match this whole celestial monster aesthetic, I also gave her some fun Luna Moth eyeliner that kind of reminds me of Moonshadow Elves from the Dragon Prince. But in terms of personality and team dynamics, I'd imagine she is more connected to the fauna and Scarlet is more connected to the flora so they can bring a full overview of forest magic to their student. I Imagine her teaching style in the moment is very patient and nurturing, but a little strict. And when she's not teaching, she can get a little stressed out. So she vents her frustrations to Scarlet and can be a little bit more laid back with him. I kind of feel like this character would be naturally very frazzled, but learn slowly to calm her anxieties and be calm and controlled in the moment. And a student kind of helps her to get that discipline. And since she's so high strung, I kind of imagine that actual physical battle would be a really good outlet for her like she's got a lot of pent up aggression in there and beating up bad guys is just a really good cathartic outlet to just dissipate all that pent up emotion, you know? Who can relate? I kind of see her as a reluctant teacher slash leader type who's not entirely well suited to the role, but she's trying to step up and make it work. And teaching Rosie actually kind of helps her to embrace the role a little bit more and accept that responsibility and not be so stressed out by it. Kind of Obi-Wan Kenobi vibes, only a little better at teaching and a lot better at nurturing her apprentice. So this boy definitely gave me some trouble but I think we made some peace with each other by the end. Like I mentioned in the thumbnailing section, the Scarlet Moth reminded me of really edgy punk slash metal slash emo fashions, which I really think match this moth's bold look. But even though this moth looks dangerous, this particular moth isn't poisonous and falls into the category of animals that uses Batesian mimicry in order to resemble a different species that is dangerous or unpalatable to ward off predators. So for this character, I wanted to design a sort of rebellious slash edgy mentor character that has a heart of gold and a softer side, but looks fairly abrasive at first glance. Pulling from the idea that even though this moth looks like a dangerous wasp, it's actually completely harmless, which I feel like applies to a lot of punks and metalheads. They're stereotyped as dangerous and unsavory, but they're just regular folks. Klaus from the Umbrella Academy and Eddie Munson from Stranger Things come to mind, so they were definitely inspirations for this character. So of course, I wanted him to be serving looks. I immediately thought of designing a leather jacket with a blue pattern on it to match the body of a moth and then to add coattails that look like the scarlet moth's wings, which is basically what I ended up doing. Although in the final draft, I just shifted the coattails to be a bit more behind him and also added a set of wings to look more like a cape just to give him a bolder visual element. So even though I love the idea of the leather jacket, he is scarlet bodied. So I wanted to pull from punk inspired fashion again and give him a little corset because historically the quote wasp waisted silhouette was also popular with men and especially dandies in the early 19th century and yes I am 
making a pun with this design choice. So I paired that with a very dad looking floral undershirt, some suspenders with a collection of potions, bright red leather pants to match his corset, black thigh high boots, and a little witch hat with plants and horns to mimic the antenna of the scarlet moth. And if he already wasn't looking wild enough, I also gave him a little shepherd's crook looking staff to allude to the plant his species like Stenestin, which is hempweed. And I added a little lantern at the top inspired by these lanterns because the black segmented look kind of reminds me of his wings. And I also gave him a huge mane of curly red hair because I feel like it fits him. And also because like the rest of you, I too have Eddie Munson brain rot. His colors were definitely a challenge since the green and the white of the hempweed didn't really match his black, red, and blue color palette. So in the end, I'm not sure how well I actually was able to unify the colors and visual elements in his design, but I think it came out okay. It's just a real battle of texture to have florals and natural colors next to red leather. Uh, his design is kind of the epitome of- I may have gone too far in a few places. But you know what? It's fine. I think he's a little disjointed visually, but I think he's also extremely fun, which also matches his personality pretty well. Which I think would be a combination of fun uncle, high school, or I suppose uh, wizardry school dropout, and gifted smartass. Like the kind of person who's kind of a know-it-all and a jerk in their adolescence, but reforms to be a mostly kind and well-adjusted in their adult years, even though they're still a little juvenile. But as a reformed know-it-all, he would simultaneously be a huge nerd for plants and really passionate about teaching Rosie about them, yet a little bit more prone to showing her which are the best for prank spells and general mischief. But even though his and Luna's teaching styles are quite different, they balance each other out pretty well and one complements and others' weaknesses, which is why they're pretty effective as partners in the first place. I'd imagine Luna and Scarlet would have a pretty solid friendship dynamic. Scarlet calms Luna down and helps her to be less rigid. Luna helps Scarlet to stay focused and even brings out his competitive side a bit, challenging him to teach Rosie the best he can. Even though they would be pretty compatible partners before taking on a student, I think Rosie would be the glue that binds this unit together. I don't think she would have the most aptitude for magic, but she would be extremely eager and hardworking, which which encourages her mentors to keep learning too. And if you're wondering what I imagine these witches do, I think they generally tend to nature and the well-being of the flora and fauna around them. Similar to the tree knights, I think of them as being protectors of the forest. And just generally goofy moth witches wandering around trying desperately to find one lightning bug because they need to do a spell to make dinner. But with that, all three designs are done. And I'll be honest, I think they're okay, but I don't love how the art came out for these characters. I think the designs themselves turned out pretty well. I'm actually a pretty big fan of them, but the art was pretty rushed and I just kind of struggled to come up with poses and draw faces. So, uh, there's that. I was a little art blocked whenever I worked on these in the sense that I had a ton of ideas, but my art skills were kind of crapping out on me that day. I would love to do some better drawings of this group at some point at a time whenever I'm feeling a little little bit more on my game and less depleted. But I would love to hear your headcanons about this group. I love reading your comments and whenever you guys give input on like the story aspect of the characters I design because I am for sure not a writer and I'm just kind of coming up with things as I go here. But let me know what you think of these designs. Give me suggestions for other things you'd like me to turn into characters. And don't forget to leave name suggestions as well. Although Rosie, Luna, and Scarlet are already some pretty fitting names. I kind of like them, so let me know if you want me to just stick with those or pick something else. Hello, and welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully drawing along with me today. I always have a lot of fun doing this, even though there were obviously some bumps along the way. But honestly, it would not be a prickly alpaca video without quite a few bumps along the way. But if you want to support me and what I do here, you can like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and check out my store. When you do, I appreciate it so much that you become an honorary leaf, because I wouldn't be a pile of leaves without you guys. Well, not so much today. I'm more so a pile of leaves because of this fabulous hat, but you get what I mean. But anyways, that's all for this video. I will see you guys next week for hopefully some crafting or sewing nonsense. But now if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and stare into a lamp.